I'm going to hit really small, unstocked, hole in the wall little streams to target some wild trout. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Did you see that? Got him. Shoot. Oh, come on. Welcome back, folks, and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. I'm actually busy tying up some flies right now for an upcoming fishing trip in Vermont's Northeast Kingdom. To say I'm excited would be an understatement, believe me. Stay tuned to the channel over the coming weeks to see a short series of videos from that trip, if all goes well, fingers crossed. In today's episode, though, I'm going to bring you along to a few exquisite little wild trout streams here in Connecticut in search of both wild brook trout and wild brown trout. See, throughout much of April this year and into May, May, I decided to focus on prospecting for purely wild trout in a number of tiny, unstocked, hole-in-the-wall streams in the state. And let me tell you, it was a blast. And if you aren't familiar with the sorts of small streams where some of these little wild trout can be found, well, you may just be in for a surprise. Anyhow, I did a whole lot of stream hopping over the course of several days of fishing, spaced out during that period, and I decided I would stitch together the highlights into a single odyssey. So let's jump right into it, guys, with our first wild trout stream. All right, guys, well, I am out here today in New Haven County, Connecticut. Putting the hurting on a lot of stalkers lately and that has got me once again wanting to come out here to some of these really small, unstocked, hole-in-the-wall little streams to target some wild trout. And that has brought me to this stream here, Secret Stream F. Now I know there are trout here uh, because I came here a little bit earlier in the year. I don't know what the stream is going to yield for me today, but there's only one way to find out. But what am I using today? Same thing I'm always going to on these small streams unless there's some, you know, really unusual circumstance. And that is my three weight floating line, dry dropper rig. I have a size 16 elk hair caddis up top, a uh, size 18 uh, threadhead pheasant tail that I'm running down below, a flashback. Let's go out there and try to get ourselves some stream-borne trout. It's not as if uh, I'm going to be going up into some remote stretch of hills where we're not gonna see a single soul and there won't be the sound of a single car. In fact, the area where I'm going to be fishing is relatively populous. Uh, there's neighborhoods throughout here. A lot of these streams flow beneath well-traveled roads. The simple reality here, guys, is that wild trout live right under our noses in places that you might assume it was impossible for them to exist. But they are there. Now, these fish are rarely going to be very large. You know, you can see the small water that these fish live in, right? It's not about the giant fish that you can't fit in a net. It's just about the experience of going and hunting down these fish. And some of the riffles you guys are gonna see me fishing are really, really tiny riffles. But it's important to understand, in some cases we're going after fish that are, you know, only six inches long, these little brookies. And they can hold in water that's two, three inches deep. Okay, there's a lot of nice water from here to the plunge pool up here at the bridge. We're gonna hit all of it. Got him. Oh, got off. Damn. Did not get a good hook set. That fish took the nymph. Oh, I didn't even get to see him that time. Got a nice little pool here, way out in the open. Gonna have to approach very carefully. There we go, got him. Oh, got off. Oh, that was a, such a little fish, guys. That was like a three inch fish. Got him. Oh, damn. Another one. Can I actually land this one? Nope. 
<laughs> I knew I was gonna lose him. Oh man, these wily little fish. Well guys, I mean, this is fun as hell. But I'm starting to get very annoyed at myself that I can't manage to bring one of these trout to the net. <laughs> we're gonna get one, we're gonna get one to the net and we're, and we're gonna take a look at it sooner or later here. It's coming, it's coming, I promise. You see a fish just rose over there, guys. About three feet up ahead of where I've been casting. It is almost definitely going to take my dry fly as long as I can present it well with a nice drift. So we gotta be ready for him. We got one. I'm not getting too excited though. We've lost all of the fish we've hooked up to this point. Beautiful, beautiful brookie. Oh my gosh. Just an extraordinary brookie that we got here, guys. Hell yeah, guys. That is what I came out here to catch. Look, a very, very small fish. But the simple reality is, guys, that is a fish of roughly average size, especially when you're looking at these small little wild trout streams. There's something unique about targeting these wild fish. There's no question about it. There's no getting around that there's something special about bringing a fish to the net that you know has never been in a hatchery. It was born on this stream, that will live its life out in the stream, and uh, that will hopefully produce more of these wild trout before it dies on the stream. Let's get right back to it, guys. Okay, now this is a large enough pool that there could be multiple fish here. I'm gonna try all of this water. Oh, we just had a take on the elk hair caddis. The fish missed it completely. So this fish may strike again. Oh, another take at the top. I still think the fish missed it. I don't think I rolled him. Let's get it a little further out there. Got him. Ugh. What do we got here? Oh my God, guys. Wait till you see how small this little brook trout is. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look at the size of this little brook trout. For him to have hit that elk hair caddis is just crazy. Okay, let's let this little guy go. Well, there you go, guys. When's the last time you saw a trout that tiny? But what an extraordinarily gorgeous little fish that was. And the fact that that tiny fish came up and hit that elk hair caddis is just crazy to me. Especially because that was probably the same fish that rose to the elk hair caddis the two previous times. So he rose a third time and I finally hooked him on that third take. God, so damn cool. So damn cool. Got one. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Let me see if I can land this fish before I tell you what just happened because it was just crazy. Okay, first of all, we have a beautiful little brookie. I think even smaller than the last one in the net right now. I literally had two fish on my line. I don't know, I'll have to see if I can zoom in on the footage when I get back to the computer. But I think I had a fish literally take the dry and the nymph simultaneously and I had two fish on for a moment. Guys, I am so curious to see if that if that came out on the footage because I, I set I set the hook and I saw two fish in two different spots when I started to, to actually put some pressure on the fish. And my mind kind of short circuited for a minute. I was just trying to make sense at the spur of the moment. Why is there two fish on my line? And it took me a split second to realize that I had a fish on the dry and on the nymph simultaneously. Simultaneously, just extraordinary. Amazing guys, amazing. I would say that Secret Stream F was a success. Yeah, guys, I mean, what a blast. Just look around me here, guys. These trout live in some seriously beautiful places. What is up, guys? Welcome to day two. 
chasing after wild Connecticut trout. It is going to be an absolutely glorious day today. The forecasts call for it to go into the 70s. Extraordinary for a day in late April. And boy, I am really looking forward to hitting Secret Stream G, a stream I have never been to before. I've only scoped it out on maps. And so I'm going to be experiencing this stream for the very first time right along with you guys. We're getting to the shallow, faster water up at the head of this pool. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God, did you see that? Look at this, look at this. This fish, I just spooked it. I just spooked, I just spooked this fish. And it actually went up on the bank. It went up on the bank after I spooked it. Look at this sucker, guys. Spooked this fish onto the bank. I didn't even have to catch the thing. I just scared it into submission <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? This is crazy. And look at the size of this sucker for this little stream I have never had something like this happen before It's a very long run Beginning at the Cascades a good 20 plus feet up I'm gonna very very carefully work my way through here Let's see if we can't get our first take That was a take. That was a take. The fish missed it, so he may hit again. He may hit again. Oh, feels good to have finally gotten a take. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, oh. Let's see here. Can we net him before he wriggles off? He's a wily one. Oh, come on. Ah. Yeah, we got him, guys. Finally got ourselves one here today. Just a gorgeous specimen, guys. Look at that beautiful, wild Connecticut brook trout. Just fantastic. All right, let's let this guy go. Another set of pretty nice runs up here. A nicer size one. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's see if we can get him in. Oh, yeah. Okay. I took the dry. All right. It took a couple casts to uh, coax this little guy out of that pool. But what he took, he took quick and aggressively. And what a beautiful little trout this is. Decent size on this one. This one's probably about seven inches, which is not bad for these wild rookies, guys. It's really not. Alright guys, well, I ended up just doing a little bit of exploring and not a whole lot of fishing. I was just kind of uh, checking out some prospective spots, kind of getting an idea of where I should invest my time next. I decided to make a quick stop at a section of Secret Stream A. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you know that Secret Stream A uh, is a stream where I've caught several wild trout. Certainly go back and check some of, some of those episodes out. I'll link to them in the description below. Oh, got one guys, got one. Nice fish, what is this? This could be a fall fish. It's not a fall fish, it's a damn nice fish. Oh my gosh, it's a brookie. Wow. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous fish. What a gorgeous fish. Find it. Oh wow. Easily the biggest brookie of the day. And what an extraordinarily beautiful fish. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Secret Stream A never does disappoint. Well, damn, guys. Secret Stream A comes through yet again. Never had gotten a trout on this section of the stream before. I had fished it before. Never saw a trout, never even got a take. And to get the biggest brookie of the day out of this section of Secret Stream A, just 
God, if that doesn't just top it off, guys. Honestly, I didn't have high hopes for this section of the stream. Uh, it seems like every time I've gone to a new section of Secret Stream A, I've been very skeptical. And, and part of that is just because it's the sort of wild trout stream that you just wouldn't expect to be a wild trout stream. And yet, section after section after section of this stream continues to impress me. Secret Stream A. Gotta love it, guys. And what a gorgeous native trout. <sighs> I feel like every small stream episode starts with me having to just dive into a mess of, of briars. <sighs> Here goes nothing. Oh, God. And we are here on Secret Stream H. So far, we've been catching all of these wild brookies out of water that was scarcely a foot deep. In most cases, more like four to eight inches deep. I mean, when we talk about blue lining for wild trout, the streams that I've been on for the earlier parts of this episode are about as close to a one-dimensional blue line as you could possibly get in a 3D world, right? Today, we're on a stream that has a little bit more size to it. Still definitely a small stream, but certainly larger than anything we've been fishing on up to this point in this episode. Uh, and I want to try to get in as much fishing as I can uh, before, if the sky really opens up and starts to dump on me. Same story as usual. We got the three weight, but let's get to it. Yeah, you know what guys, I'm going with the streamer. The conditions are right, the water is right, so let's go for it. Here we go, guys. Yeah, there's something rising out there. Got him. Got him. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. I don't think this is a trout. I think it's a fall fish. It is super aggressive fall fish just took that streamer. I didn't even have time to strip the line on that one. I uh, was just trying to let it sink and the line started to just run. Okay, we're going to this really shallow water run over here where I saw some fish rising. Got the dry dropper on, elk hair caddis, pheasant tail. Got him, got him. What we got here? Looks like a brookie, guys. Looks like our first trout. One brookie on the board with the dry dropper. Just awesome. I mean, this spot looks so incredible. It would have almost been uh, kind of demoralizing if I didn't get anything out of this spot just because the spot looks so damn good. So uh, yeah, we did get a take, which is pretty awesome. Got him. Ah. Oh, so guy. Oh. Oh, what do we got here? I think this is a, I think this is a brookie. It's fighting like a brookie. Yep. No, it's a brown. It's a little brown. Oh my gosh. Took the nymph. Gorgeous little wild brown. Just so cool. I, you know, I was kind of surprised in a lot of these wild trout streams that we hadn't bumped into any browns yet. But here it is. Just a fantastic little fish. All right, guys, well, that fish didn't further us in our quest for a larger wild brookie, uh, but it is pretty cool that we were able to bump into a wild brown here on, uh, on Secret Stream H. Definitely not a stocked fish. Now, it's important to understand that uh, although you can find wild browns on a number of different streams in Connecticut, um, browns are nonetheless not native. Now, a native fish, by definition, is a fish that would have been here in prehistory without any human intervention. Um, browns, of course, are fish that were imported here from Europe, um, and they've been stocking them in Connecticut at least since the late 1800s. And in certain streams, um, they have established wild, self-sustaining populations. Again, though, that doesn't make them native, that makes them naturalized. In other words, fish that live in this environment now are self-sustaining, 
um, they have cert basically coalesced with the environment, but they are nonetheless still not native um, because they were not here in prehistory. Um, they are essentially aliens in this environment. I am all rigged up with the three weight here. We are on Secret Stream I, a uh, wild trout stream you guys haven't seen on the channel yet. I have fished this stream before, not extensively, but I have fished it before. I have caught wild brookies here before, uh, but it's been probably a good uh, year and a half or so since I fished it, maybe even, maybe even two years. We are in Litchfield County now, so we're uh, a, a good deal northwards from where uh, a number of our secret streams were earlier in the episode. This is the last stream that I'm going to be including on this episode. I feel like it's been a hell of a time out here hunting these small wild trout, mostly native brookies, but also some, some wild browns. Uh, I've had a blast and I'm hoping that we can finish off this episode with some more wild trout from Secret Stream Eye before we wrap it up. Another big pool over here. Unlike the last big pool though, I do have room for a back cast here, so I'm gonna use it. I'll fish this pool a little bit. See if there's anything hanging out in here. I do wanna be kind of careful approaching from the back of the pool here. And as I make my way underneath this tree, I'm also trying to watch further up in the pool to see if there's any rises where the riffle comes in. Got him. Got him. Wow, what is this? This is a decent sized fish. Is it a fall fish or is this a trout? Oh, it's a brookie. A nice brookie. Wow, it looks like it's got some incredible coloration too. Nice brookie, guys. Nice brookie. Oh man, I hope we can land him. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, look at that. Look at the beautiful spots on that fish. Decent sized brookie too. It really is. Decent size for a wild brookie. And aggressive as hell. Nice fight with this fish. Unfortunately, it does look like this fish is wounded. You can see on his back, he's got a very clear wound there. Let's wish this guy the best and get him back in the water. All right, the prime part of this riffle basically starts here. Got him. What have we got here? This fish took the nymph. And I just saw the dry fly hesitate just a little bit. Oh boy, this fish is really fighting. I think it's a brookie. Oh, yep, it's a brookie. Another, another fairly decent size one, actually. All oh, right. This brookie already threw the nymph, took the prince nymph. Boy, just a beautiful fish. I actually think this is prettier than the last one, albeit a tiny bit smaller. I mean, damn guys, look at the gorgeous patterning on this fish. What a natural work of art these fish are, right? Carries us into the most wild and beautiful scenery of nature, amongst the mountain lakes and the clear and lovely streams that gush from the higher ranges of elevated hills. How delightful in the early spring, after the dull and tedious time of winter when the frosts disappear and the sunshine warms the earth and waters, to wander forth by some clear stream, to scent the odors of the bank perfumed by the violet and enameled as it were with the primrose and the daisy to wander upon the fresh turf below the shade of trees whose bright blossoms are filled with the music of the bee, and on the surface of the waters to view the gaudy flies sparkling like animated gems in the sunbeams whilst the bright and beautiful trout is watching them from below. To hear the twitter of the water birds who, alarmed at your approach, rapidly hide themselves beneath the flowers and leaves of the water lily, 
as the season advances to find all these objects changed for others of the same kind but better and brighter till the swallow and the trout contend as it were for the gaudy may fly until in pursuing your amusement in the calm and balmy evening you are serenaded by the songs of the cheerful thrush performing the offices of paternal love in thickets ornamented with the rose and woodbine days of fly fishing 1828